Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Monday, October 11th edition of the Basement Academy. As we begin a new week together, we'll begin a new topic together that'll last us, I'm a thinking, probably at least two weeks, uh, maybe stretch into three. And as always, appreciate uh, your uh, leaning into these studies. Uh, I hear from a number of you and appreciate uh, that feedback. Anything that uh, you think you'd like to hear me talk about, certainly let me know. Any suggestions for strengthening uh, these times, uh, certainly let me know. And I expect we'll probably do another question and answer. Uh, You know, I'll put it out to you. You'll start sending me questions and we'll do that probably a little bit later in the fall. I think that's always a good thing. So uh, let's begin with uh, our morning psalm. This is a short one and I'm going to just offer this as a prayer. And so pray with me. Psalm 131, a song of ascents, a psalm of David. My heart is not proud, O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. And all the people said, Amen. May it be so, Lord. May we be humble and thoughtful and concern ourselves not with great matters. Okay, as I mentioned on Friday, what I want to do is think with you about evangelism, but I want to do it under the notion of un- learning evangelism, unlearning evangelism. Now, I have come to think about evangelism, not necessarily myself, but in in working in Christian leadership, pastoral leadership at Greenwich and other churches, that evangelism is somewhat of a dirty little word. It's the E word. Remember, Years ago, when our oldest, Turner, came back from school one day and he said, Dad, you're not going to believe it. And I forget which which of his little buddies said the S word. And I'm thinking, oh, it begins already. And he was, I don't know, second grade, third grade, something like that. Yeah. He said, stupid. (laughs) (laughs) So as parents, we know the words that we don't want our children to pick up, but we know they're going to. Well, In some strange way, evangelism has become a somewhat of kind of like a dirty word. Um, Not that we don't think we should be about it, but when we hear the word evangelism, it's like, ah, I'm not very good at that. You know, let's, let's let somebody else do that, that kind of thing. And so... What I hope to do for these couple weeks is to help us, help you uh, and and myself together, to help us rethink what evangelism is. I'm operating with a set of assumptions or or perhaps even some some observations. that, that I've picked up, not just at Greenwich, certainly at Greenwich, but, but, um, but beyond. Uh, so I've been at this Christian leadership thing for not only the 29 years of ordained uh, experience, but, you know, another almost 10 years uh, beyond that. And, and so what I have come to learn is that for many people, the thought of doing evangelism makes them uptight. They're anxious. They're nervous. Um, they, they, it, they feel awkward uh, about sharing their faith in any kind of uh, explicit way. I have also learned that very few actually do share their faith. Now, I'm not talking about inviting people to church. That's That's something different, okay? We might We'll consider that uh, in these coming weeks. 
But inviting somebody to church isn't exactly evangelism. You're probably inviting somebody to church who themselves is are already predisposed to the faith, right? And so uh, for, for most of us, evangelism is just something we don't do. And, and we don't do it that is, we don't actively share our faith, articulating uh, the gospel. And we're going to talk about what we even understand the gospel to be. We're, we're going to talk about that and probably later this week. But for those of us in, um, I guess I'll just say it, conservative churches, right? I, I don't, frankly, I, I'm not sure our progressive churches think that much about it, um, or they might think something different about it. Maybe we'll we'll dive into that a little bit. But for those of us who've come to know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, we have heard and picked up some message somewhere that we ought to then pass that message along to share with others what has changed our life. But in conversations over the years, what I have discovered is that folks are nervous about that because I'm not exactly sure what to say and I don't want to blow it. This might be the only time and I don't want to give a wrong answer to somebody and all of a sudden they get the wrong impression or, or truth be told, we don't want to talk about it sometimes because we're not sure we could handle a question if somebody asked us a question about our faith or about the Bible, or maybe a harder question, why does God allow so much suffering in the world, that we just don't think we would have the answer. And so and so we calm ourselves by saying, well, you know, when I know more about the Bible, when I know more uh, about uh, some of these hard questions, then I'll be about, you know, sharing my faith. So we're not always sure what to say. Uh, we, we, and appreciate the concern that we wouldn't want to bear false witness. We somehow would, would somehow mislead uh, somebody. Some of us aren't comfortable putting people on the spot. And it feels like evangelism might be doing that. You know, if we were to explain our faith and say, you know, well, I, I actually believe that, 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 that God does exist and that, and that he sent his son Jesus to reveal his love and truth and grace to us and that Jesus died on the cross. Um, and there's things we need to talk about that, you know, but, but, but Jesus died on the cross and that by believing in Jesus, one can have peace with God and be guaranteed and assured of their salvation and understand um, that they will uh, be with God eternally uh, forever, you know, something like that. Some very rough sketch of the um, gospel. If if we were to ask somebody or, or tell somebody that, well, the next step of evangelism is you want to, what do you think about that, Bob? Is that something you'd like to consider for yourself? And, and frankly, a lot of us don't like to be put on the spot. You know, we don't like the sales uh, pitch that all of a sudden, so you want to sign on the dotted line? And, and some of us feel like, I don't want to put somebody in an awkward position themselves. I love them too much or I care for them too much, be a coworker, family member, neighbor, etc. cetera, whom, whomever it is that you might be thinking wished would come to faith. Uh, and sometimes it's children or, or, or family members. Um, and, and you don't want to offend, you don't want to, you know, push them away, you don't want them, you don't want to get into a, you know, a fight of, of, of some sort. Um, and so I think that's one of, again, one of my observations is we're reluctant or, or, or hesitant to share our faith because of that. We know the gospel has a call associated with it, Right. That, that if you embrace Jesus, then there are implications of that. And that's good. I, th I think that's a good thing that we would understand that. If we don't think that there's implications, there, there are implications to embracing Christ as Savior and Lord, then we might need to rethink our own faith, right? Because Jesus said, follow me. 
And this, this call to follow implies life change and, and somehow I'm going to have to, to conform my life uh, to the pattern of Jesus teaching. And so some of us just are uncomfortable with the sales pitch part of uh, evangelism. Uh, some of us have tried it. Might have been younger uh, when we were in college, uh, maybe just out of college. We were involved in a church or a fellowship or some other group that was actively seeking to share the faith and structured that in some kind of meaningful way, evangelism explosion, uh, distributing uh, perhaps literature, the four spiritual laws or something like that, and very intentionally trying to engage people in conversations. And, and you tried it and it just, it didn't go well. <laughs> it was awkward. You had a, a, a confrontation or you felt like a failure that everybody else seemed to succeed and you didn't. I mean, there's a, there's a variety of things I've, I've heard over the years. <clears throat> and so... Um, some folks might think, well, evangelism isn't my gift. You know, you're, if you're familiar with the spiritual gifts, say, well, evangelism just isn't my gift. You know, the Billy Grahams and, and others are, are so good at that. Don, you're good at that. Eric, you're good at that. Austin, you're good at that. You know, Lucille, you're good at that. We'll, we'll let you all, you know, do, do that kind of thing. Um, some folks might think, I just don't know anybody who's not already a Christian. And so I don't know anybody I would actually share with. And that itself would be a, an interesting um, reality to explore. How is it that a Christian would have no friendships or meaningful relationships with somebody who isn't a Christian? Okay, and so there, there is the value of Christian fellowship, but somewhere along the way, we would like to be in relationship with others, right? So there's there's a variety of, of observations um, uh, I've I've made, uh, some assumptions, I guess, that, that I begin the the study with. Um, and perhaps another one is, which is why I want to I'm calling this unlearning evangelism. I'm assuming, that each of us has some notion of what evangelism is. And I'm assuming that it may not be the best understanding of what evangelism is. That we might have an assumption that evangelism is putting people on the spot. Evangelism is going door to door, knocking with literature in your hand. Evangelism is sitting with a person on the um, you know, metro or on the airplane or something and you know, just immediately turning it into a spiritual conversation where you're trying to um, you know, draw that person uh, to Jesus Christ and an opportunity to share your faith. Um, that evangelism is, you know, uh, kind of turn or burn, um, you know, turn to Jesus or burn in hell uh, kind of message. So what I've observed is a lot of folks just don't do it. And there's got to be a reason why we don't do it. Um, and, and so what's ironic to me and, and kind of just today and introducing the, 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 the ideas here. What is ironic to me, evangelism, the word itself, our English word evangelism, comes from the Greek word euangelion. The angelion is the message. The euangelion is a good message or good news. Gospel means good spell or good word, okay? What is profoundly ironic to me, maybe sad and tragic too, it is, but what's ironic, that which by definition means good news elicits such bad news experiences and bad news feelings in Christians who themselves have experienced the good news, right? So we have come to 
experience the good news of God's love through Jesus. We have come to experience the good news of forgiveness and mercy and tenderness and a second chance in life, uh, hope and comfort in the, in the midst of sorrow and loss, the hope of resurrection, the hope of reunion. We who've come to experience the gospel, the good news, have such a bad news thought or set of feelings about it. <laughs> That's the one that kind of gets me here. It's like, what in the world is going on that good news becomes bad news? And so that's why I want to unlearn evangelism with you. I want to examine in depth. So, so we're going to, you know, take day by day, you know how we do here, and just kind of tease out different aspects of this. The, the, the content, the message itself, what is it that we're actually saying? The kind of the method, how do we say this? That is, how do we recognize opportunities uh, to be saying this? What does scripture actually say about this? Not, not what does the church I grew up in or the minister or youth director that, you know, I knew so many years ago. What does Billy Graham, you know, of course he's deceased of blessed memory, but how did Billy Graham evangelize? And so as we look at the content, as we look at the scripture um, and what scripture says about this faith, this news, this message that we proclaim. And then as we explore the human condition and the way we behave, I, I think we're going to come at this and try to take a, a robust look at it such that what, what I hope happens is the thing you have even if it's the faintest little idea of what evangelism is, you have an idea of what it is. Some may have a very um, deep and wide thinking and uh, understanding of evangelism. I want to take what we have learned about evangelism and examine that in the process we might actually unlearn some of that so that we might relearn <laughs> and real, truly come to learn what, what Scripture calls us and what God may be calling us uh, to be and do. And so I, I used this concept yesterday uh, in the, the, the Sunday message that these Gentile Ephesians who have turned to Jesus Christ, they have much to unlearn. There aren't many gods, there is one God, <laughs> And they have to unlearn what they thought about how life works, what prayer is, what worship is, who God is, not who the gods are, but who God is. And so they have to unlearn what they've come to, to think about, and then they have to learn uh, the truth of, of God in, in Jesus Christ. So... Anyway, that's the adventure I'd like to go on with you for the next few weeks, day by day, patiently, slowly unpacking it. Um, that's the way I do things, kind of the slow roll. And in the process, my hope is that we will become unlearned evangelists. <laughs> I, I want to keep it. I want to debunk. I want to demystify. I want to... Um, remove the stigma, if that could be uh, perhaps the right word, that, that sometimes attends evangelism such that we actually will begin to or recognize that maybe we were doing it without knowing that's what we were doing, but that we would become those who are bearers of the good news to our families, our neighborhoods, our friends, others, that they might be one to the faith. They might come to know the good news 
and come to know Jesus as we have. So, so let's uh, let's just stop there and uh, put the bookmark in, and we'll pick up again tomorrow and uh, begin unlearning together. Let's pray. Father, thank you uh, for this good news, uh, this good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of his life and death and resurrection, his life in our lives, his mercy and grace and forgiveness. Help us in these coming days together to unlearn and to relearn and to be shaped by your holy word and your truth that we might become witnesses, bearers of this good news. And it would be a joyful experience, not a, a bad news experience. And we pray for those family members and friends and others whom we have yearned to know the gospel, to know Jesus. We, we desire, deeply desire that and help us to see that you might want us to be part of that process of drawing them uh, into the family of faith. And so we make our prayer uh, in the one who is the good news himself, Jesus our Lord. And we pray how he taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, may the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the author of this good news, may he watch over you, bless you, keep you this day and forevermore. Amen.